Here are another 10 Marvel movie details you might have missed. In Avengers Endgame, Tony and Nebula are stuck in space for more than 20 days. So how was Tony able to survive without water? Well, if we look at this scene from Iron Man 2. No, you want to. Just keep the I know, it has a filtration yeah, system. You could drink that water. Tony filters his pee and uses it as a source of water. Disgusting! In Spider-Man Far From Home, when this drone is trying to find MJ and Happy, why didn't it just use a thermal scanner to know they are in the back? Tony's drone should be advanced enough to have this, right? Well, if we go back to moments before and look at this scene. This guard was able to damage the drone, disabling its thermal scanner. You can also see it here, indicating that the thermal scan is unavailable. In Avengers 1, when Tony sacrifices himself to destroy the mothership of the Chitauri army and just barely escapes the wormhole, Jarvis actually saves his life here. You can see that Jarvis removes his shoulder pad, giving him just enough push to go back outside the portal. There's actually an episode of What If where Tony doesn't escape the wormhole because Jarvis doesn't remove his shoulder pad. Tony never made it home. In Captain America Civil War, look at this scene. That is awesome, dude! After Falcon grabs Spider-Man, Bucky is in the way of the cameraman, so he does this sick spin move to avoid hitting the camera. That is awesome, dude! In Iron Man 1, look at this scene. It's completely hopeless. It's so fast, but if you slow it down, you can actually see how the energy from the arc reactor goes from Tony's chest to his hand blasters. In Avengers Age of Ultron, Tony Stark uses the Hulkbuster. So, what makes the Hulkbuster really strong, it's not just the size, but also the power output. If we look at its body, it has a total of 11 arc reactors. In context, each arc reactor is equivalent to the output of three nuclear power plants. If my math is right, I don't know what it is. Three gigajoules per second. So, the Hulkbuster has the power output of 33 nuclear power plants. In Iron Man 1, Tony accidentally discovers his blasters. I thought you said you were done making weapons. It is. This is a flight stabilizer. Completely hopeless. He initially said they were just to maneuver his flight capability, but when he tries them, they shoot a strong blast. This is the moment Tony realizes the weaponry capability of these blasters. If he hadn't realized this, he might have just mounted his suit with guns like War Machine. Completely hopeless. In Iron Man 1, Look at this scene. It's completely hopeless. It's so fast, but if you slow it down, you can actually see that before firing the blaster, there's some kind of energy already emitting from Tony's hands. All of Tony Stark's suits have their own arc reactor except the Mark I. We all know how smart Tony is, so it doesn't make sense for him to use his chest arc reactor to power his suits since it could lose power and kill him. That's why he puts separate arc reactors in his suits. This is also why Rhodey was able to steal one of Tony's suits since it was powered by its own reactor. Aloha, cowboy. Shut it down. In Iron Man 2, look at this scene. Congratulations on the opening ceremonies. They were such a success, as was your Senate hearing. If you look closely, we can see the Mark I in the background. The suit Tony used to escape the cave but it's labeled as a reconstruction since he wasn't able to retrieve the original. This shows how sentimental Tony is about his suits. Wake up, daddy's home. Say daddy's home!